Well, a very warm welcome uh, to you all during this time of lockdown. What we're doing this morning really is a tremendous thing. We are gathering together to worship the Lord of all. And our first song reminds us that God is holy, thrice holy, 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 holy. And when we think of God's holiness, we are to think of him in all his glorious perfections. And something of this is brought out in our first song, holy, 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 merciful and mighty, perfect in power, in love and purity. So whether we're sitting or standing, let's sing together, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. Christians, we love to pray to our Heavenly Father. We consider it to be a great privilege. And as we come before him, we believe that he hears and answers our prayers. And we're so thankful to God uh, for answered prayer with regard to Peter Poirier, who's now out of hospital and recovering at home. But I trust that we'll continue to pray for Esther and uh, Sylvia, still in hospital and very much in need of our prayers at this time. Well, shall we commit our service to the Lord? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this new day that you've given to us. We thank you for your goodness to us in lots of different ways. We thank you for this great privilege that is ours of being able to come before you, a great and mighty God in prayer. 
It is an amazing thing to think that, that we, finite human beings, can refer to you as Father. What a tremendous thing it is to know that we are those who have been adopted into your great worldwide family. Lord, we want to commit uh, this, our service to you. Uh, we ask that you would help us uh, to learn from your word. Uh, we pray that you might help us to be attentive. And we pray that you would add your blessing to everything that is said and done. Lord, we mentioned some people a moment or two ago and uh, how we thank you uh, that Peter is now out of hospital and at home recuperating. Pray that he will soon know a full measure of health and strength. That we commit Sylvia and Esther to you, asking that you would help them uh, to make a full recovery too. But please may they be very aware of your presence with them at this time. Lord, as we come before you to, to worship you today, uh, please cleanse us afresh from all our sin and renew within us a right spirit. And we pray these things in the worthy name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I want just for a moment to talk about grace. Not the person that you might know called grace, or the prayer you might say before a meal. I want to talk about God's grace. What is God's grace? Well, it is the undeserved favour or kindness that he shows to people who don't deserve it. Let me try to explain this to you. If you are nice to someone, they may give you a gift in return. If you work for someone, they may give you a wage, some money in return. If you do well in a sport, you may be given a medal or a trophy or a prize in return. The trouble is, we don't deserve anything from God, apart from his judgment for all the offences we've committed against him. Yet God offers forgiveness, righteousness and eternal life to all who repent and trust in his son, Jesus. That, I would argue, is wonderful grace. The Apostle Paul experienced God's grace and marvelled at it. He'd spent many years persecuting the church. He later considered himself to be the worst of sinners, yet even he found salvation in Jesus Christ. Even he experienced God's grace. And I want to read to you what the Apostle Paul said to the believers, to the Christians, in Ephesus many years later. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God 
not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So let's see, shall we, next about God's wonderful grace. Wonderful grace that gives what I don't deserve, pays me what Christ has earned, then lets me go free. Wonderful grace that gives me the time to change, washes away the stains that once covered me.